In this video, we look at the bubble sort algorithm. Many different algorithms exist for helping us sort an unordered set of data items. The bubble sort is a relatively simple one to get your head around, and so it's often an early one which is taught. It allows us to sort an unordered list of items. It compares each item with the next and swaps them if they're out of order. In effect, bubbling the largest or smallest item up to the end of the list. The algorithm completes when no more swaps need to be made. It is the most inefficient of the sorting algorithms, but it is very easy to implement. It's a popular choice if the data set is quite small. We cover the bubble sort algorithm in more detail in our book. If you're interested in this, there's information at the end of the video. So let's look and work through a simple example. On the left here is our, our unordered set of items. On the right is the sorted set we want to get to. So we're looking to sort the list on the left into alphabetical order. We start by comparing the first two items. Are they in the right order? Well, they're not, so we swap them over. We then compare the next two items. Are they in the right order? Well, they are in the right order, so we leave them where they are. We compare the next two items. Are they in the right order? Well, they're not, so we swap them over. We compare the next two items. Are they in the right order? They're not, so we swap them over. The first pass through our data set is now complete, and we can be sure that Weetabix is in the correct place. And you can see why we call this a bubble sort, as Weetabix is effectively bubbled up to the top of the array in its correct position. We start a second pass and compare the first two items. Are they in the right order? They are, so we leave them where they are. We compare the next two items. Are they in the right order? Well, they're not, so we swap them over. We compare the next two items. Are they in the right order? They're not, so we swap them over. Notice how we didn't have to look at the top item Weetabix and compare it to anything as we'd already determined that had reached the correct place. The second part is now complete, so we can be sure that Weetabix and Sugarpuffs are in the correct place. We start our third pass. We compare the first two items. Are they in the correct order? They are, so we leave them where they are. We compare the next two items. Are they in the correct order? Well, they're not, so we swap them over. The third pass is complete, and we now know the top three items are in the correct place. We now compare the first two items. This is our fourth pass. Again, we ask if they're in order. They're not, so we swap them over. The fourth pass is now complete. There are no more swaps to be made, so we can be sure that all items are now in the correct order. Let's look at the pseudocode for this bubble sort and break it down. So we've decided to declare a function called bubble sort, and this function is going to take in one parameter. This is an array of data items which we want to sort, and it's called items. We declare two additional local variables to use during our bubble sort function. We have n. This is an integer which will be used to keep track of how far through the items array will need to travel on each pass through our while loop. And we have swapped. This is a boolean we will set to true if we've just performed a swap during one of our sorting passes. We now set n to the length of the items array and initialize our swapped flag to true. We're now going to enter a while loop 
which will run as long as n is greater than zero and swaps are still taking place. This represents a pass of our algorithm. Every time we start a new pass through the while loop, we set the swap flag to false. In other words, each time through the loop, we assume a swap hasn't been found until we discover otherwise. Our array is zero indexed, meaning the first item starts at position zero and not position one. So we decrement the number of items to check by one. Next, we enter a for loop, which will run n number of times. In other words, check every item which needs checking. Now we use an if statement to check an item in the array against the next item in the array. If the item is greater than the one we're comparing it to, it needs to be swapped. Here we've used a made up function called swap, which will perform the swapping for us. We could also make use of a temporary variable to perform a three stage swap, doing exactly the same thing. We also obviously have to set our swapped flag to true to indicate that we've just performed a swap. Once the while loop is exited, we know that all of the data items in the array will be sorted. So the only thing left to do is return the sorted array and exit our bubble sort function. The pseudocode in these videos follows the exact style which will be used in your exams. The full set of pseudocode is defined in the syllabus, which can be downloaded from the website. We understand that algorithms and data structures are some of the trickiest areas of computer science. And so we've written a book which covers all the algorithms and data structures you'd need to know. It covers all exam boards from IGCSEs to GCSEs, A-levels and O-levels, and is suitable for all syllabus and specifications. It covers all the data structures, searching algorithms, sorting and optimization. There's a mapping reference so you can see which algorithms are covered by the various exam boards. Each algorithm or data structure has its own chapter. We give simple applications of the algorithm. We go through it in structured English. We use a visualization and a step through using diagrams. We then present the algorithm in pseudocode as well as in Python code. We also have the algorithms available to download in their coded format and additionally in C Sharp and Visual Basic.